Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal. This is my little tech corner of the internet. I finally moved off of optical media. That was quite a foray into it. Uh, still very much love my optical media. In fact, I'm thinking it would be great to uh, even create backups of my inventory on optical. Uh, but I moved on to another, uh, another project for organizing my life in the start of 2024. And that is uh, using this really, really great uh, self self-hosted inventory management software called Homebox. Uh, so today I want to do a video specifically about ways you can access it remotely and I'm going to talk about the ways that I've played around with and I'm going to talk specifically about Tailscale because it was the easiest one to get working and uh, I'll talk about that and some disadvantages of doing it remotely uh, locally because a lot of people, this is a Docker image, a lot of people are hosting it like me on their Synology NAS and uh, it's feasible if you're using this for inventory management. In fact, it's predictable, expected that you might have needs to access inventory from outside of the local network. So the question becomes, how do we take this Docker image, this container running on a specific port and how can we access that from the outside internet in a secure fashion that doesn't, uh, you know, that doesn't open our local network to a bunch of security risks. So the first, first suggestion or way to do this, and this obviously is not actually what we're here to talk about today, but you can, of course, the easy solution to this problem is to deploy uh, your home box installation, uh, install the container on any uh, cloud internet provider that uh, offers Docker, and there's lots of them, lots of them out there. Uh, one that I've personally used is DigitalOcean. There's AWS ECS. Some of them are harder to use. Some of them are easier to use. But this would be a very uh, pretty straightforward solution is instead of installing this on your Synology or on some other local server and then trying to figure out a way to connect remotely, put it on some public facing internet. The uh, concern obviously, or the, uh, the reluctance I'd say for a lot of people is that um, by doing this, you've created a dependency in the sense that you have to keep paying for your hosting to a third party provider to keep your inventory management accessible. That's actually the entire reason that I did it on my Synology, nothing about saving money, but rather because I don't like the idea of something as personal as my inventory catalog, um, depending on me keeping up payments and, you know, with a third party. So I just wanted to flag that as a kind of a reason why it might be better to go self-hosting hosted on this approach. Um, so the second option is to host it locally on like your Synology, which seems to be like what a lot of people are doing, and then figure out ways to expose that to the internet. So if you're using a Synology, there are some kind of ways to get your services exposed. Uh, people have different feelings about how secure they are. One of them is using uh, DDNS. Uh, Synology will give you a free host name um, and then you'll need to set a port forwarding on your router because um, the uh, the port of the container that Homebox runs on is, I believe, 3100. Then there is reverse proxy creation features in Synology. Now, people have had success using these. Uh, I've heard people kind of say that they're not the most secure ways of doing things. So that's actually why I looked for alternatives. The second option, just to put it out there, is that uh, in DSM Package Center, there is a, a package for OpenVPN. So you could uh, you can install uh, OpenVPN server on your Synology, which is quite useful to have running anyway. And uh, this uh, can allow you to connect remotely. The deficit here is that obviously um, that means that you have to uh, engage the VPN connection every time you want to just get to this one service and it's going to be on for everything you do on the internet. So that's kind of, I would say, not ideal because you might want to be doing a lot of your you know, going about your day and you just want to check something from your inventory, to have to engage VPN just for that seems like not a great workflow in my opinion, but uh, it is it is one uh, one option. The next one is something I don't, uh, I haven't done simply because I uh, found Tailscale and saw that it worked really nicely out of the box so I didn't need to look into this, but people have mentioned that you can do stuff with some Cloudflare services. There is an image for uh, Cloudflare in uh, the Container Manager in DSM, and uh, as usual, Reddit is really a great place to 
uh, find all sorts of tutorials and ask questions. I found some threads on the Synology subreddit, people explaining how to do all this. A uh, bit, a bit above my pay grade, but if you can, uh, you might be able to figure this out. So the one that wasn't above my pay grade and that I was able to get going really, really easily was Tailscale. So there is a Tailscale package in Package Center in DSM. And that installs in a jiffy. You just kind of install it. And then you authenticate your NAS with Tailscale. So that's step one. Well, step one, actually, I left it out here and I spelled Tailscale wrong here, is that uh, step one is creating an account with Tailscale. That's number one. You're going to have to open an account with them. It is free. Then you want to authenticate the NAS. And then you're going to need to authenticate the connection clients. And it's cross-platform. They have uh, authentication clients for Windows, Linux, and for Mac. Uh, and it's really, really simple. For Ubuntu Linux, what I'm using, I downloaded a Debian. Uh, it gave me a authentication code. I put that in. And now my clients are authenticated. And that means that I can connect to other authenticated machines. So this computer, the desktop, is authenticated with Tailnet. And that means I can plug in a IP address and get into my NAS. And then I just need to append a port number to connect to Homebox remotely. Um, so this is, uh, obviously, I think from a security standpoint, this is good because uh, that IP address, you can only access it from a other machine in your in your tail net uh, so a random person can just type in your ip address and get straight to your nas the client has to be authenticated so i think from a security standpoint this feels more robust to me i don't like the idea of there being any uh, address that's easy to guess out there that might lead to my local network and my nas um so the this final way that i implemented this and this is i know it's kind of obvious but just to kind of put it out there um for it for uh, the container for Homebox, it runs on port 3100. So you just need to put in the tail scale public IP and then you just append 3100 to the IP and that will get you straight to that port. And uh, you can just put a bookmark in Google Chrome. I have it called Homebox Remote via tail scale. And uh, from any authenticated computer, you can just connect and it'll go straight there. Now, what if you wanted to say, I have a domain name. So this is just some implementation I thought of. Um, it's a little bit... Um, I mean, the advantage of this, I thought about doing this before realizing that's actually more complicated than it seems, by which I mean, I thought, okay, let's buy a domain name like Daniel's Inventory or Daniel's Stuff, and I'll put that on to the tail scale, um, to the public IP and the port, and that'll just m move me straight there, uh, just for convenience. Now, if you have a bookmark, is it really that much more convenient to have a website that only you can access? I'm not sure it is. But if you want to go down this route, buy yourself a fully qualified domain name. And to get from here to here, to get from the domain to the port, there is a blog on Tailscale about how to do this. Because uh, you actually, you, we're not just forwarding from this IP to this IP, the Tailscale IP. We also have to forward the port and that's where the complication comes in. Um, so there is a way to do it, however, uh, because, you know, stuff runs on different ports. And there is a very detailed blog on the Tailscale website as to how to do this, uh, how to say... Um, take this IP address and uh, move it on to through Tailscale to this port. I haven't done it yet and I've been, I'm kind of in mixed feelings as to whether it's actually worth the hassle because for very little added convenience as I already have to authenticate my machines, is it really worth doing? I think it's probably not. One issue that I want to flag here and I might flag this with the project team is that when you scan your QR codes of your inventory and you can see, like this is really the key functionality here is you scan the QR codes, you see this goes in this box. The QR codes are generated based on the install URL. So if you install this locally on your Synology, all those QR codes are gonna link off to local IP addresses. And therefore, if you're accessing your inventory remotely, you're going to have a problem because the IP address will scan, but there won't be the service on your local machine, a page to get it to. I don't know what the solution is to this. I suspect there might be one, um, but this is certainly, I would say, one drawback because if you do this on the internet, the generated IP addresses will be to, a, uh, to the install URL in the cloud on a website. And therefore, whether you are uh, operating locally or remotely, 
to the local network doesn't make any difference. Whereas uh, this is potentially one issue that I can see uh, with doing it my way, but um, I don't think I would be scanning stuff from remotely because that doesn't even make that much sense that I would have reason to do that uh, but you know if you want a more robust solution um, and perhaps using this uh, home box for managing infantry in multiple locations and you might want to manage stuff you know that might your assets might be moving between locations and therefore between networks I can see this potentially being an issue anyway I'll leave it there there's lots of brainy people uh, involved in this project lots of brainy people install this and you might have an idea if you if you can't think of a solution to this uh, situation I flagged here then please do leave it in, in a comment thanks for watching if you're looking to get started with homebox I hope this was helpful until the next video